Ford, like many other car makers, has recognized that Silicon Valley is the place to be for technological innovations. That's why they invited journalists to their new Palo Alto facility to see where the company is heading. Spearheading the company's lineup is the new 600 plus horsepower GT supercar. It not only represents our highest uh, level of performance car, but it really represents a whole decade of work into innovation around areas on light weighting and aerodynamics and EcoBoost engine. And this is really a showcase for all that innovation. The defining element of the GT is its weight. Ford has used a combination of lightweight materials like magnesium, carbon fiber, and carbon fiber type materials to build their new supercar. But those materials aren't exactly cheap. The GT will cost around $400,000. As you know, the carbon fiber manufacturing, it's a very uh, labor intensive uh, process, but we have a, a joint venture going on right now. We're looking into research around not only bringing down that cost, but being able to be a lot more efficient at higher production volumes for the carbon fiber. So it'll depend on uh, the progress that we make there and also the, the individual vehicle in terms of where it is in its development. So all that innovation on the GT with lightweight materials is a great thing, but it's really only applicable to you if you can spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on a car. Now what about the rest of us? All the rest of us who drive normal cars in the normal world, we deal with something like a Fusion. And now for example, this is the front coil on a normal Fusion. It weighs about eight or nine pounds. This is a lightweight option from a concept car. Maybe weighs about three or four pounds. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you add it up, you can have a mid-sized car that weighs six to 700 pounds less. So Ford has taken what they've learned from the GT and applied it to this Fusion prototype. It's nearly 700 pounds lighter than a normal Fusion. These new materials can and will work for regular vehicles relatively soon, probably within a decade. It's been done before. Remember that Ford launched the last GT, a car made mostly of aluminum, 10 years ago. They took the ideas from that car and implemented them in regular vehicles down the road. That's why you can now buy an F-150 pickup with a copious amount of aluminum alloy. Carbon fiber-like materials are an even bigger jump than aluminum, but when you see it, it might not be on the vehicles you expect. You can't jump to carbon fiber because there's just not enough available. You're going to see a lot of the lightweighting technology applied to the larger cars, the trucks and the SUVs, because that's where we have the biggest challenge. Even when engineers figure out how to cheapen the process, don't expect a completely carbon fiber family sedan in your driveway. It's the bits and pieces from suspension springs to internal engine parts to lighten rubber seals that you'll see. Will you see it on the body structure from the get-go? Probably not, but you might see it as structural reinforcements. All of those things together can total hundreds of pounds of weight loss. And that leads back to smaller engines, better performance, and better fuel efficiency. When you have a smaller engine, which you can package more efficiently, think about the kinds of opportunities you can have for just compelling design. And when you look at the GT design, uh, your pulse gets, uh, starts uh, racing for, for the right reasons. So there's a lot of benefits around that, but it's all around driving innovation to, 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 to bring performance to the next level and do it in an environmentally conscious way.